Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Sophia Marshall, and I'll tell you a little bit more about my specific role, because I think it would be better a little bit later in the presentation. But I'm here just to give you a brief overview of our School of Business. <coughs> our School of Business is actually located on the Fairfax campus. Okay, so we do have, I'd say, maybe a little over 5,000 students enrolled in the School of Business. We also have a graduate part. Those students are mostly up in the Arlington campus. So there we have about, I'd say right now, maybe 600 plus or so. So it's a little bit smaller of a campus um, presence up there. But anyway, in the School of Business specifically, we have different centers affiliated with, you know, studying different things. We have five majors, and I left booklets back there. You don't have to take one. I just thought it would be helpful if you wanted to get an idea of what the different majors are that we have in our school. But more specifically, I'm here to talk about the Center for Government Contracting, which is one of the brand new centers that we actually stood up um, and just had an opening of it, I would say, last week. And it was a snowy day, that's when we had an opening. <laughs> so, but um, before that, I'll tell you a little bit about some of the centers here. We have a Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship. We also have a Center for Real Estate and Entrepreneurship. Uh, a Women in Business Initiative, which happens to be a lot of the women in the community that want to be involved in helping our students do different things, um, get involved in starting business, we've got that. Also have a see, Investor Protection and Corporate Fraud Research Center, and that's specifically for the accounting side of the house. And then um, Research Partnerships and Grants Initiative, but the ones that I'm a little bit more familiar with would be the Center for Government Contracting. So the Center for Government Contracting, again, like I said, it's been in existence, it's been a thought process, I would say, for the past two years or so. We finally got an executive director this past August, and it has actually come to fruition. We had our opening again last week. It is actually set upon three pillars, research, education and training, and collaboration. So I'm going to talk about those a little bit out of order, and you'll see why it makes sense in a minute here. So the first one is actually research. With research, in terms of this area, how many people do you think that we have involved in government contracting? Or probably a better question would be, how much do you think the government contracting industry is worth? <laughs> billions. Yeah. billions and billions and billions, right? As our, um, the executive director, Dr. actually the chairman, I'm sorry, Dr. John Hill would say it's a $500 billion plus industry in this area, which is why it deserves kind of its own area to study specifically. That's why we stood up the Center for Government Contracting. So the first pillar is, of course, research. And that means that we're basically trying to create a public forum where we can discuss different topics in government contracting. Some of the popular ones happen to be, of course, acquisition, you know, um, compliance, ethics. One that we're starting to see up there a little bit more as well is going to be dealing with talent acquisition. And that's kind of where I come in, which I'll tell you about my role in a little bit. So, my question to you, since we are a very, very, very new center, if you are a government contractor or you're somehow involved in this industry, because no one in this area is, right? <laughs> <laughs> but if you have any ideas of different areas to explore or you would want to be a part of that conversation, please let me know. I'll con connect you with our executive director, and then that can be you know, something that we'll discuss, perhaps. Um, we have as well as affiliated faculty who are doing research on those particular topics and would love to have your expertise involved there. The second pillar is collaboration. And I think with anything in our schools, you know, whether it be even Bolgenau School, our school, any of the other schools on campus, a lot of what we do, we could not do without, first of all, having alumni who can go and say what we've done to be able to show this is a product of what George Mason has actually produced. Um, partners, which would be a lot of community people. So again, if you have any, if you are, if you're an organization or you know people that would be interested in talking about government contracting, helping us build this, please let me know with that. And then the CGC, that's our short for the Center for Government Contracting. We also have different um, industry discussion series. 
for example, we actually were supposed to have one on January 25th with the, I want to say, Secretary of Transportation or something, <coughs> and, uh, Heath Tober, but we had to cancel it. And we canceled that because of the furlough. Mm -hmm. So, But I'll tell you one thing that we did do um, to support the furlough, we put together an event actually up at the Arlington campus and just had like resume writing resources for how to find a job and what to do during the furlough. So that's kind of our big thing is just supporting the community. And then finally, and this is, I have to admit, one of my favorite sections, of course, <laughs> education and training piece. So the CGC is really, really, really huge on executive education. And that would be like the leadership piece. So we're talking to people that are very interested in leadership, helping to build our leaders to give them more um, government contracting competencies, things like that. We already have, I'd say, about four courses that are already taught at the level, the graduate level, specifically focused on government contracting. One of the newest things, which I'm very, very, very excited about because I'm involved with building a curriculum, is our new GovCon minor for undergrad students. So I expect that to be rolled out here within the next year or so, possibly sooner than that. All right. And then finally, this is where I fall in, career advancement. So my role is kind of dual-headed. I'm employer relations manager, and I have a long job title, Government Contracting Job Development Specialist. Whew. I know. So when I go to networking events, I just say GovCon Job Developer. <laughs> All right. So what I do there, Basically, well, let me back up a little bit. The school, the, the uh, school of business, we have our own in-house career services. So what that means is we don't really use the other career services office. It's hard to explain. You know, you can see that there's a big structure in Mason. But basically, there are six of us in charge of giving career services to the 4,500 plus students in the school of business. I'm one of those people, but I'm kind of a little bit more special. Talk about that. But what everybody does is we provide resume assistance with them, uh, interview preparation, career assessments, and workshops. And we have a lot of students who come in all the time and just don't know what to do with a business degree. All right. Even if we have students that come in from other majors, that's perfectly fine. If we have time, we'll definitely see you and provide you with the right resources. Specifically for me, my role is the employer outreach, and that's where I go out and I get to connect with all of you and see if you're interested in, you know, coming on campus, talking to our students, and actually employing our students, all right? So we've had a lot of employers come in and do one-campus interviews, which is always fun, all right? Um, as a professional, that's one of my favorite things, and that's kind of the panel series where we will actually have um, about eight or nine industry professionals come in and speak to our students for an hour. And then the second hour is for networking with the students. I wish I could tell you that all of our students stay for that section. <laughs> they don't. And it absolutely amazes me because then they have the opportunity to talk with an employer one-on-one, -on -one, face to face, and they get up and leave. I can't believe that, but it does happen. It does happen. I know, I know. So. Um, but again, those are actually focused around all of our five majors, and then we have special topics. Usually it'll be a special topic on entrepreneurship or perhaps government contracting, which of course is one of my favorite ones. Employer in Residence is a new program that we've actually started, and I'm in charge of that one mostly where I actually bring in employers that want to come and do office hours with our students. So it's two hours on a Wednesday morning if you want to come out and give office hours and just sit there and wait for our students to come in and talk to you about resumes, interviews, anything that they want, you are perfectly welcome to do that. Just let me know. It's a wonderful opportunity. Because for some reason, they don't like to listen to us. They would rather listen to you. <laughs> and that's perfectly fine. Right. <laughs> then, of course, customized events. Um, really, whatever it is that our employers are looking for, whatever ideas you have, you know, welcome, welcome to sitting down with you and talking with you. We kind of call it like your BYOE, build your own event type of thing. All right. And then finally, job announcements. So if you are looking for students, there's a place that I can actually have those posted. We have a Business Buzz blog. You also are welcome to write for our Business Buzz blog. Anything that you think 
related to career, career services that would be really well um, received by our students would be perfect. So this part, the employer outreach, is not just specific to GovCon, right? It's for it's not anything, anything in the school. Okay. It's perfectly fine. And then finally, the GovCon student assistance, that is me. So when I do have a lot of students come to see me about that security clearance piece, all right, about what exactly is GovCon, because many of our students still don't realize that, you know, many of their parents or their family members work in GovCon. They're not really sure why it's an industry, what it means, and all that good stuff. So it's my role to kind of, you know, push them through that. Specifically, I'll tell you, government, GovCon, um, we've built some really good relationships with a lot of the larger companies. One in particular that I, I just love, I had the opportunity to go up and visit their headquarters. They came in last March, winded up interviewing, um, it's a three-letter agency, Winded up interviewing nine of our students, and actually eight of them now are going through the process. I have no idea what happened, you know, none of my friends <laughs> are that. But I just think stuff like that is really, really, really neat because it shows that they're looking for like specific skill sets. They come to us specifically for that. And I think um, with the GovCon minor that we have in a whole government contracting center, it's really going to be a good thing for helping build pipeline in this area. So next steps for you guys. If you have any GovCom related employment opportunities or I'll skip down to the next one, anything non-GovCom, any part-time, full-time internship opportunities, um, any experiential learning types of things, if you want to connect with our students, please go ahead and shoot me an email at the bus hire. Or of course, I'm here now, you know, afterwards. <laughs> Tell me what you've got. Um, also, if you are interested or would be interested in connecting with the CGC, and you want to learn more about what you can do, what kind of role can you play in the Center for Government Contracting, let me know. I can connect you with our executive director for that. And also, my favorite thing, if you're just interested in meeting our students and you want to do that employer in residence, that's like the first opportunity I think would be great. We'll even pay for your parking. I can't guarantee <laughs> you'll find a spot. <laughs> but we will pay for parking. I'll be you do. Um, again, let me know. So.